For today, we are going to be touching on an important topic in the sense that um, in, your, in your work as a data analyst, you will notice that you'll be given a lot of data sets. So take for instance, you are a manager or you are a data analyst and your manager sends you data sales for the sales for 2017 sales for 2018 sales for 2015 and they want you to analyze so what what i'm trying to point out is this you may be faced with scenarios whereby you are asked to summarize sales you get my point you are asked to summarize sales and don't expect all the time for your for all your data to appear in a data set. Let me explain what I mean by that. Do not explain, oh, sorry, I've not shared my screen. Oh. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you see my screen? Please confirm you can see my screen. Can somebody confirm you or she can see my screen? Okay, Marvin's. So, like I said earlier, do not expect that all the time, all your problems will be, you are going to be given a particular sheet to solve a problem. What I mean by that is this. Don't expect as, a, as your job as a data analyst, you'll be given a particular data set, everything will be in one sheet and you'll be asked to do analysis. Sometimes you can be contracted to do analysis over a long period of time. So what I mean is this, uh, you may come to a particular organization and they are giving you their folder like this. So you are seeing 2015 sales, 2016 sales, 2017 sales. You understand? When you have this scenario playing out, how do you carry out analysis? So assuming each of them, kind of have issues. So they have things like um, um, empty cells, they have things that I don't, so there are some form of, so let me, let me just go to the Excel sheet. So looking at one, I've opened one, and this one is speaking to 2015 sales. So 2015 sales means that, 2015 sales means that we have this kind of data set and this kind of data set, we, we need to run analysis on it. But in, a, in order for us to run analysis on it, we also need to do some form of, we need to do it in 2015. Remember what I showed you guys earlier. You are doing this in 2015. You are doing this in 2016. You're also doing that in 2017. How do we do it? Now, this is where we know the power of, this is where the power of um, Power Query. So I told you guys something about Power Query. So Power Query is something that can actually help us in our day-to-day -day analysis. In fact, Power Query is so, so important in your job as a data analyst. You understand? Because it, it gave, it's, it's like, I call it the time saver. You understand? When I was first introduced to Power Query, I really love the tool because it's more or less like a time saver. So at the end of the day, you save a lot of time, a lot of copying and pasting. So today we'll just do an introduction to Power Query. But from tomorrow, we are going to do a reward. You will start to see how important Power Query is in data analysis. You will start seeing how we can be able to simulate data data that is coming in a form that we can't use it to analyze any form of the to make any form of analysis but with power query we can be able to clean it make it look nice and we can be able to run analysis on it what i want to explain to you guys is this data does not come in such a format you don't have data coming all the time in such a format whereby you can go ahead and run analysis. You understand? 
data comes sometimes in a format whereby you don't need you don't you can't even carry analysis carry out analysis using this or you can't feed it into things like power bi feed it into things like uh, what do you call it again tableau and run analysis so for you to be able to ensure that you are a good data analyst you must first know how to clean data manipulate data they call it data pre-processing -pre -pre make it to the form whereby machines like excel there's excel power pivot things like tablet things like power bi can actually absorb it and run analysis on it so that's the essence of power query so we go ahead and um, start using the power query so for us to be able to join this sheet together so the essence of this whole lecture i'm giving you guys is for us to be able to run add these three sheets together without doing copy and pasting. And at the same time, create a system whereby if another sales like 2018 comes into play, we don't need to start go, going back. We don't need to go back and start doing all those manual stuff like copying and pasting and running all those data operations we need to run. So what we intend to do is to add this whole sheet, make it consolidated, add them together, this whole workbook, and run an analysis as if they are one. So that's the essence of this class. So let's start by, so for us to do that, we'll first create a new sheet. So I can create a new sheet. Um, so by pressing Control N, so uh, later today, we are all going to be learning some Excel shortcuts. We are all going to be learning some Excel shortcuts. So for us to be quite effective in doing this, um, so the first thing I need to do, you open your blank Excel sheet, you go to data, you go to data, you go to data. So when you go to data, you go to new query. And when you go to new query, you find yourself in file. So Power Query is a very, very important tool. So you can get data from workbook. You can get data from a database and run it on Power Query. You can even get from a job um the azure um architecture so you guys understand that uh, microsoft is the owner of azure uh, so azure is more or less like a cloud platform so the azure platform helps you to do a lot of things on cloud so that is for um the cloud you can even get it from the from sharepoint you can get it from web so for web that's where you start doing things like um web scraping so you can go to online, pull a particular table. I hope the time, time is going to permit us. Um, if we don't do it tomorrow, maybe next tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, rather. We are going to be doing a lot of, we are going to be doing some form of web scraping. I know as a data scientist, a data analyst, you must, be, you must know how to carry out some web scraping activity. You understand? so uh we'll be able to do that so for today since the whole fold this the cell that we are working with they are in a particular folder so look at where the fold look at where the sales we are trying to work on or rather the, the workbooks we are trying to work on they are in a particular folder and for us to be able to work on it together we need to bring it down uh, we need to make sure everything is consolidated. So for us to be able to work on it, we need to get the file path. Remember the last time we discussed, I told you guys, when you say directory or file path, so this is the file path. If I want to copy anything here, I click on this URL tab. You understand? And I sell, I copy everything there. So when I go here, I select the file path. Or oh, sorry, in this case, we are calling it the folder path. This is the folder part, so I copy it. So when I copy that, I go to my Microsoft uh, Excel. So I want to go to data, new query. I go to file, from file. So I'm saying that what I want to bring in now is coming from what? A folder. 
So if I select the folder, you will notice that the dialog box comes out. Um, so for us to be able to do that, so when you do that in your own, you will see a dialog box. All you need to do is to paste that file part or the folder part. So when you paste that folder part, you just click on open. And here we are. We now have, this is what we call the Power Query interface. Now look at what Power Query has done for us. It has gone to that folder part and you are seeing the cells, or sorry, the sheets, or in this case, we call it the workbooks. All the files in that um, in that particular folder part. So look at the folder part. So you are seeing the folder part, and you are seeing everything. The date it was accessed, date it was modified, the date it was created, and you are even seeing each of the file parts here. So this is each, each of the file parts, we have it here. So this is a tool that is very, very important that would really, really help us. So that is just the uh, the first interface that you, you will encounter in your, in your um, Power Query journey. But remember the goal, we want to combine the sheets together and run analysis as if they are one particular sheet. So for us to continue to do that, you will see that when you come to this combine, when you come to some certain buttons here, you have buttons down here. When you click on the combine, you are seeing combine and transform. You are seeing combine and load. You are seeing combine and load too. Remember, this is a precursor to Power BI. So you are seeing transform data and you are seeing combine and transform data. So which one am I supposed to choose now? Now transform data, we perform some kind of transformation on this data. It gives you the option to manipulate this data and add other things you need to add or perform some kind of data cleaning, data manipulation. But remember, our end goal is not just to perform some kind of manipulation. We need to com combine this particular data sets that we have. So what we need to do, if we go to combine and load, combine and load is just going to combine it and load it for us without performing any form of transformation. But in this case, there are some kind of cleanups we want to do. There are some kind of analysis, some columns we need to add in this case. So for us to do that effectively, we will need to do the combine and transform. If I click on that combine and transform option, you are seeing it appear. So just give it a minute. So if I go to that combine and transform, you're also seeing another interface here. Now, what the interface does for us is to be able to select. What the interface does for us is to be able to select a particular sheet so it selects a particular sheet for us when it selects a particular sheet for us it gives us the example of what we are trying to do so this is the first sheet which happens to be 2015 sales you are seeing it appear here now it happens to be the first file that is why excel went ahead to bring in the 2015 sales for us as a sample so we can be able to preview what the sheets look like. You get my point? So all I need to do is to select the sheet and I click on OK. So when I click on OK, um, just a minute, guys. Hello, guys. So I'm back. Hello. Can you hear me? Please confirm you can hear me. Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Okay. So when I click on that particular sheet, you understand? This is the main... When I click on that particular sheet, it now takes me to the main interface. 
Now, this interface is what we call the Power Query interface. Now, this Power Query interface is something that we need to really focus on today and explain some of the things because this is current. This is going to really help us. This is going to really help us in our career as a data analyst. So you are seeing that Excel came here. I mean, sorry, Power Query rather, not Excel this time around. It has transformed this file for us by adding some form of parameter. This is the example of the transformed file that we have. Now look at your series sales. That's the name of the folder. This is where all the folders are located. All the folders are located here. It has gone ahead to combine them. How do I know that it has combined them? If I click on this drop down that says source name, and you see load more, you will see that you are having now 2015 sales, 2016 sales, 2017 sales. It has combined them as one. Again, when you come to your left side, or rather your right, my right side, or the left side of the, should I call it my right, the right side of the screen? Yeah, that should be it. You are seeing this query setting. You need to understand something. In Power Query, there is nothing like control. Z. You don't undo and redo. Please, can you repeat what you said, sir? In Power Query, what? So whatever operation you carry how we started, we brought in the files. It came out in this format. I showed you guys that earlier. It went ahead, did some form of hiding for us, did some form of invoking of custom functions, rename the columns, remove other columns, or rather remove other columns. Now what it went ahead to do, uh, it expanded the table. You understand? So we can start from the, we can start from, we can delete everything here by pressing on this uh, sign, you understand, this red um, icon that we have here, we can go ahead and delete some of these things. And the step will just will delete the particular step. So go, if we go ahead now, we can go ahead and delete these filtered rules. If we delete these filtered rules, this is what will happen. Okay. You will see that it has come here. It will add other rules to what we don't want before. You understand? That's not showing here. You get my point? That's not showing here because of the fact that all the files that we had in Excel, or sorry, all the files that we wanted to add, they all are in Excel format. Assuming I had my video, assuming I had my video in this same folder, it will go ahead and perform that filter so that you'll be able to see that that video is not part of it. It only picked Excel files. That is the essence of that filter. You get my point, guys. So let's go ahead and do what we need to do. Now, this is our data set all combined together. The first thing we need to understand is that we don't need this row. This row actually, oh, sorry, we don't need this column. This column actually helped us is what Excel or rather Power Query helped us to know, to add, it just concatenated the file name to the data sheet that we are working with. So first of all, we need to delete it. How do we delete it? We just right click on it and you are seeing this ribbon here. So everything you have here is like Excel tool. This mimics an Excel interface or rather the interface of every Microsoft product. So you have all your ribbons here. I'm going to be explaining all these ribbons. So the first one is Word Home. That's the first tab you have there. You have another tab, Transform. You have another tab, Add Column. You have another tab, View. So by the end of this lecture, we must have been able to at least touch on some of the important functions that we have in this particular Power Query that will be helping us to our data. But for now, Let's work on the ones that we have in the home tab. So here, we can just go here and do delete. If I want to delete this column now, all I need to do is to click on what this remove column. I make sure I select the column and I just click on remove column. 
and Excel has, I mean, Power Query has done that for us. You get my point. Now we are still looking at our data. Remember, this particular tool known as Power Query doesn't just help us. It doesn't just help us to combine data sheets together. It can also help us carry out some form of data cleanup and data manipulation. So what we need to do now, you will see that this ship date is in number format, it's not in date format. How do we convert it back to date format? So we can easily click here and you see this particular filter icon here. You can convert this, you understand, to a date format. So what I need to do is to click here and we go to, you click on the column and you go to format, you go to transform tab, you are seeing the format um, ribbon here. You get my point. Um, so this format ribbon doesn't speak to it. So if I click this particular um, icon that you have before the ship date. Now, one thing you need to understand is this. I so much like this power query because for every column that you have here, you are seeing the data type of that column. When we came to row ID, it's all numbers. So you are seeing row ID here, row numbers. When we come to other ID, this is a test column. You are seeing this um, icon here that speaks to test, ABC. When we came to other date, it was in date format. So you are seeing this calendar icon here that speaks to date format. You get my point, guys, please. Make sure you understand this concept. It's going to help you a long time. It's going to help you well. So for ship dates, you are seeing is in number format. I want to transform it to a date format. So all I need to do is to click on the icon and I say I want it to be what? A date format. Immediately I click on that icon and you see that there is a drop down here and I click on this date format. It has transformed the whole item we have in that ship date transformed it to what? To a date. So transform them to a date, every, every item under that column. So when we move on, you will notice something. We have an address here. We have an address here. And this address is comprising of what? It's comprising of the postal code, we don't use postal code here in Nigeria, or something that we need to, it's something that, oh, before we go there, let's come back here. So when we look at this particular data set, or we look at this particular power query that we have here, you are seeing that it has, you see that customer names are in first and last name, and your boss came and say, please, oh, Franklin, I want you to make sure that I don't want this first name and last name and middle name. I want you to add everything together. In Power BI and um, Excel, we can go ahead and use the concatenation function. But here, how would you do such a thing? You understand? We are doing some kind of data manipulation now. We have gotten into the data manipulation phase. So for me to do that, concatenate everything together, and make it one column because my boss told me to go ahead and add everything together and make it customer name. He doesn't want to see first name, last name, and middle name. All I need to do is to select all the columns and I will go to this transform tab. When I go to this transform tab, you are seeing merged columns. Merged columns. You understand? Or if we don't want to go to the transform tab, we can go to add columns. Okay. And you're also seeing that mesh columns. I will explain tomorrow why you are having mesh column appear in so many places. So we can see this add column tab and you are seeing mesh column. So when I click on that mesh column, see what happens. Now it's telling me is the dialog box that comes out here and it's asking me the separator. You get my point. I will tell the dialog boss that please, I want to separate each of them with space. Now he's asking me what will be the name of this new column that I'm trying to create for you 
after I finish merging everything together. By default, you are seeing merged here. I can go ahead and say, no, I want everything to become customer name. Call the column name, customer name. You get my point? Now, what will be the separator in between them? I'll just say, I need your space. I don't need anything. You can come here and say you want to have comma. You can say you want to have semicolon. But I will tell Excel or rather Power Query, I need a space in between. So when you are measuring them, add space in between. When I click on OK, ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing a particular column appear here. Let's scroll to the end because that's exactly what Power Query does. You are seeing it appear here, customer name. So when it adds a column, you understand. You are seeing it appear as customer name. And it appears at the end. Now let's delete that. Let's delete that particular. Let's delete it. Now I told you that there are two that appears. When you go to add column, you are seeing merge merge column here now when you go to transform you are also seeing another merge you're also seeing another mesh column here now let's use the one that has to do with transform let's do the one that has to be let's make use of the one that has to do with transform now remember you have first name last name and middle name so i select all three now I'm using the mesh column that belongs to the transform tab. If I click on mesh column, same thing appears. They're asking me, what is the mesh column, the, um, the separator? That's a delimiter. What do you want to put in between what you are trying to merge? And I'm saying, I want to put space. What will be the name of the column? Let me put it, customer name. And you click on what? okay now see what happens this is what happens now you notice that first name last name and middle name has disappeared it has taken it off but when you use that add column um, option the merge under add column you see that it just added a new column and those old columns were there that is the difference between add column and transform now transform we go ahead and transform the data Take whatever that was old, the old um, item, transform it to a new one, and you don't have access to the old item again. But for add column, it will perform the operation and still leave the old items that you have there. That's the difference between the two. That's the difference between the two. So whenever you are seeing some certain functions present in transform tab, or some certain ribbons present in transform tab, also seeing that same ribbon present in the add column tab, understand that there are differences in between them they are different one we perform the operation and still leave the or the column that you worked on them the other will perform that same operation and do what take off the old one and replace it completely with the new one so that is it for our much love power query guys i love power it's a time saver so let Let's move on to the next one, which happens to be address. Now, I want to perform the same operation here, but this time around, we are splitting instead of adding. You have address, you have country name, you have the state name, you have the, what do you call it again? You have the country name, you have the state oh, name, have the you have the city, and you have postal code. You get my point. So you have postal code. Let me delete this. So you have postal code. So this particular column now, your your boss is telling you, I need to see the country that we made these sales. I need to see the city. I need to see the states. So how do I separate this out? So what I need to do is to come to the add column. So I try to do add column so that whenever the excel whenever excel perform this kind of a uh, apologies guys something just happened okay so i like to use the add column 
so that whenever I accept perform this kind of operations for me, I can be able to see both the old and the new tabs. You get my point? Um, formula bar. Okay. Yeah. So view. Always allow. Okay. So I'm seeing everything. Yeah. So this is exactly what it is. Yeah. So I prefer to use the add column because that column, whenever it does any operation for me, I can be able to see the old stuff there. So I use my own hand to delete, you understand, the old column myself. You get my point. So always use the add column instead of using the transform column because once you do transform, it is gone. You get my point. So that's the difference between the two. But nevertheless, we need to split this column now. How do we split it? Let's split it systematically. Now, the last thing you can see in this address is the country. The first thing is the word. The first item here is the postal code. The second item here is what? Is the city. Why the one in the middle, or the one in the third item here, what? Is the state. Now, let's be systematic about this. If I have this kind of data and I want to split it, how do I go about it? If I have this kind of column and I want to split it, how do I go about it? Now, I come to that transform tab and you are seeing split columns. What that means is that I want to split the column. I want to split it into several places. So by delimiter, how do I do this? You understand? How do I do this? Remember, if I should use space, I will separate both United and States. They will be in different color. I want to be very systematic with this. So for me to do that, I want to split with space. It has gone ahead and identified the delimiter for me. Now, what I want to first do is the leftmost delimiter, which is the one that occurs to the left, first of all. Let's take out the, uh, what do you call it again? Poster code. You understand? Quote character. You say none. You understand? So when we click on OK, this is what happens. You are seeing it now. It has splitted it. So it now made it address one and address two. So what we need to do is to rename it. We put address and now we now have a separate column known as what poster code. That's to tell you that one has happened. Now the next one is what the city. You know that in city, they are all having space together. So how do you do that? For us to split it, we cannot go by, by positions. Let's go by positions and see what happened. So columns row, and we say position, OK. So we can split this number of characters by delimiter. So we want to split the rightmost. OK, you can see each, each occurrence of the delimiter. So when we select the each occurrence of the delimiter, the space, remember, they are asking us code character, you always put none there. You click OK. This is what happens. Now we split everything. Every single thing that has space 
it has split there it has splitted them so you have address one address two address three address two address five you understand so what's going to happen is that we can now be joining the ones that have we need to join together so you know that address one and address two speaks to city because you have los angeles he splitted it by all the spaces that had that was that occurred there so you now have address one and address two now we want to add everything together to be able to give us the city so when i select the two i click on mesh columns and you are seeing that it has brought out that same dialog box i can come here and put city i click ok that has taken care of what oh so this is what happened i went ahead and i did that merging and i did not tell power query please put space in between the two items you are trying to merge together how do i correct this error i told you there is nothing like control z so what do i need to do you are seeing that any operation i carry out here excel is actually recording it power query is recording it so the last one was speaking to mesh columns i can click on this remove sign and it takes it off it takes me back to the default state so let me do that again i select address one and address two and i want to merge the column so when i click on merge separator i want to select space merged i want to change this to word city and i click on ok and it has done the needful for me so i now have city here the next one is uh, states so here we don't have two names that speaks to one particular location so we can just come here and say states the other one happens to be country you are seeing united and states are splitted so we want to merge the two together to be called a country we perform that same operation mesh columns and we are doing space and we call this country and i click on ok and this is how you get both your state your postal code your city your state and your country we are also having another address here. Okay. So you are having another address here. I think we can take off this column. You can take off this column. Oh, so this is the errors that we are seeing here. So look at what is happening here. You are seeing New York City. You are now seeing that it has gone ahead. So we were doing the wrong thing all along. So like I said, when we come tomorrow, we'll be able to do all this advanced form of power query. So when I was adding and uh, splitting columns and adding them together, you notice that there are some particular rules that you have New York City. It wasn't just two, it was actually three. You understand? So I needed to add both three together. So when we come tomorrow, we'll be doing a lot of formatting. We'll be doing a lot of uh, if conditions. So this here, this is where we'll have to apply if conditions. You understand? And add everything together. Now, whenever, whatever we are doing here, there is always a code that is running at the back end. And this is the code. It is called the M query. We call it the M code. That's the name of the language. Just like you have Python, you have JavaScript. So here you are having the M code. You get my point? Here you are having the M code. So that's exactly what is running for us. So whenever we are running any form of operation here, it is writing the code and telling Excel or Power Query to run this kind of operation. So it is called the M code. So for us to be able to do all this, we must know how to write the M code. So we'll be doing a lot of if conditions here tomorrow. So moving on to other things. So let's take out this address. Let's take out all this address. And delete, remove colon. 
or rather remove yeah remove columns so let's remove the columns so the next operation we want to carry out here is speaking towards some form of analysis you understand some form of analysis okay i didn't add that i didn't add that apologies guys so you can also use this particular cell or rather this particular um this power query to run some form of analysis for us you get my point you can also use that to run some form of analysis for us i don't want to go into something that you guys will be asking me a lot of questions by adding columns and uh okay i think let's do that so column from example from selection um Let's make this sales. Okay. Okay. So I think I need to do something here. Um, costs. Oh, let's make this sales. And let's make this um, cost. Yeah. Okay. I just added another column here. Assuming your manager or your boss rather asks you, we have a sale here and we have the cost of this item. I want us to get the total profit that we had. You understand? Give me the profits that we had. You get my point? So your manager walked in, this is your sales, total sales, this is your column per item. Give me the profit that we have per item. All you need to do is to come here. Remember, when you minus your transaction, we call it transaction, not sales. Transaction. When you minus your transaction from your cost, you get your profit. Abinobiso, hello guys. The whole class is too quiet. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Very well, very well. Nobody is asking questions. We are just trying to follow. Uh, this is okay. So when you are when you want to get your profit, all you need to do is to select this both columns. I first of all select my transaction and I select my cost and you are seeing a lot of um performance here or rather you're seeing a lot of functions here i can come to this standard and i say i want to do subtract and when i subtract it gives me another column here and i can be able to call this my profit are you seeing how easy this is are you seeing how easy this is so it so happened that I have columns that are the same, both transaction and cost, that that's why you are seeing zero here. But when they are not the same, both your cost and your transaction, you can be able to see that subtraction that gives you your profit. Again, we notice that we have ship date and we have other dates. So your manager is trying to find out what is the length of time between shipping dates and other date let's know the item that took a long time before it got to the customer you understand so before we ship the particular product let's get to find out how long it took them to take it from the warehouse and go take it to the customer so the customer ordered in a particular date and you have shipping date so i click on the shipping date first and i click on the other date second and we are going to date functions so we go to date and you are seeing subtract days when i click on subtract days it has given me the length of time so we call this what do we call this now guys what do we call this um delivery duration Okay, let's call this duration, or we can call it lead time. Lead time. Oh, I think I didn't. 
So this is the lead time. So this is how data analysis starts. So I can come here and filter. And I want to get the highest lead time here. So when I come here, I can select on a particular item and say, okay, let me see the lead time for this. This is seven. Let me see the, um, uh, the particular item that took a very long time before it left the warehouse. And when I click OK, I'm seeing the item. So immediately, I can draw the attention of the warehouse manager. And I'm asking how long this, uh, how come this item took this long for you to leave the warehouse? How come this item took too long before it left the warehouse? We can't be keeping uh, clients for seven days without assessing their items. You see how data analysis, you understand, can easily help us to answer some questions, some business questions, because you can be doing well and you see sales, customers are coming in and they are buying, but you find out that customers are becoming dissatisfied. If I've told you guys, I told you guys before now that the fact that you are making Sales doesn't mean that your business is growing. For you to have a business, it has to do with something they call repeat transactions. So you must have a local, you must have loyal customers in your bucket. If you are having customers that are just coming in and they are not giving you opportunity for repeat business, it's only a matter of time before you run out of customers or clients in this case. So with this, you can actually help, you can ask, you can actually answer questions that borders around lead time, time wasting, customer waiting time. Because if a customer goes to another organization, rather, or goes to another business, and they found out that that business is actually reducing the waiting time from seven days to say 24 hours, you've lost that customer. There's something that happened in the US sometime. Um, I think it's the it's FedEx. So you have the US postal service. And um, I just want to give a little bit of story here. Maybe to have one of one to have somebody here. So we have US postal service, which has been there for a very long time, run by the government. So FedEx came out, sorry, DHL that came out, and DHL bragged that they can be able to deliver your package in less than 24 hours. That's, well, no matter the, no matter the place that the package is coming from, as far as within, within the U.S. Um, territory. Can I hear you? It's within the United States 24 hours. So, hello? Somebody wanted to ask a question. No, I said I can't hear you again. I think that's from you. My please, can anybody hear me? It skips at some point. It's not back. At some point, it stopped. You okay, maybe network network. Apologies, guys. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very clear. Okay, so um, I was speaking to a particular event that happened in the US. How the how DHL, I think it's DHL or FedEx, how they came about. So it so happened that uh, people that was involved in delivering packages that period, we had the US Postal Service. I don't know whether they are still in business, but it was run by the government and they were actually delivering packages. Sometimes it takes you to seven days, four days for you to get what you actually, what somebody sent to you or what you bought online, something like that. So it was DHL that came out and said that they can be able to get you, no matter where it is within the country, they can be able to get you that package in a space of 24 hours. Now, that was how they were able to run their business model. So they noticed that for them to be able to achieve that 24 hours period, you must ensure that people work overnight. So that was how they started that overnight work. They now had shifts. They now have what we call the graveyard shift. People working 
from period of 12 or 10 in the night to say six o'clock the next morning. But why they were doing that graveyard shift? They still noticed. Guys, it's always good whenever you are doing a business, gather data from a particular business. It's going to help you. Some of you are working in organizations. Always ensure you gather data. It's going to speak to a lot of things and help you along the line. So why they were doing that same business? Why they were doing that overnight shift? They noticed that still yet, packages were still living late. You get my point? They noticed that packages were still living late. People will come to work. And they will tell themselves, they will come to work during that night period. And you know, during that night period, managers are not on board. It's just the lower cadre of staff that is there. Managers don't need to be there. They are home sleeping with their wives. They don't need to be there. It's only the lower cadre of staff that come to work, those that have shifts. So they notice that people were still coming. People and packages were not leaving very early. So they notice that when people come to work at night, they will just sleep off. And they will say, after all, it's the six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning that I'm living here. So why rush? Why rush and do my work? Let me just first sleep for like four hours before I do my work. So they now came up with a system after looking at their data. They now said, okay, you know what? If you resume work by 10 p.m. in the night, whenever you finish doing whatever you need to do, you can go back home and sleep. So if you finish by 12 o'clock, you can go back home and sleep. So only for you to sleep in the office. When they brought out that policy, come and see how things was moving very fast. So somebody resumes by 10 p.m. in the night, does all the job he needs to do. By 12 midnight, is done. He goes back home. Why am I saying this? When you are look, when you are running a business, guys, or when you are working for an organization, you must first of all look at the data. And when you look at the data, it's telling you some kind of things. It's telling you, oh, maybe you can look at the time, you can look at your employee data, and it's telling you when people are clocking in and when people are clocking out. You can know staff that are productive. Somebody can be running some form of racketeering in your workplace. Take, for instance, he's performing some kind of sales somewhere in a particular rural area. Maybe you work for a multinational that has branches all over the country. So you notice that items that this person is selling is actually selling it to a particular customer. You can look at it and now say, ah, let's investigate. Is it that this guy is selling it to his brother and from there he's doing some form of racketeering and selling it to the end users himself? So these are some of the analysis that you can perform as a data analyst that at the end of the day, you are giving business Insight. You are telling the business where to go. You are telling the decision makers, that's your boss now, your supervisors, please look at what this person is doing. Let's see how we can be able to arrest this whole thing before it germinates into something that we don't want to do. So that's exactly what we need to touch on on Power Query. So after doing everything that we need to do here, all the data manipulation that we need to do, now we need to send that data back to Excel. All you need to do here is to come to the Home tab, and after doing your cleanup and you are satisfied with your data, just go to Close and Load. Go to Close and Load. When you close and load, see what happens. It has gone ahead and load the data for us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we come here and look at other dates, you are now seeing both 2017, 2016, and 2015. So what does that mean? That this has gone ahead and do all the merging that we need and the cleanup and what we need to do on this data set. Now, if I want to still go ahead and go back to my, my power query, I have this workbook queries here. I can go ahead and click on this Osiri sales. Once I click on it, it takes me back to Power Query. Maybe I'm not satisfied. I want to see perform some kind of analysis here or some kind of cleanup here. You understand? So the same thing, if I'm done, I just close and load. And it takes me back to Excel. So with this, I can easily go insert 
insert my pivot table, click on OK, and start doing the analysis that we say we want to do. So I can now come here and be doing my sales. I don't need to, I don't need to touch on this. I know by now everybody knows this whole. So we can come here and come to shipping mode. So you are seeing everything appear here. So this is how we can be able to carry out analysis. Again, why are we going this route? Why didn't we just copy and paste? Why are we going this route? Guys, so let me go back to my, my um, let me go back to my, To my file to my folder assuming somebody now goes and tell you ah 2018 sales is out to i copy my 2018 sales and i paste it here and they just told you that 2018 sales has come out and they are telling you to still run the analysis and everything that you need to do here all i need to do is to paste the 2018 sales in that same folder. Please make sure the file structure is the same with what you had initially. Make sure the file structures are the same. So all I need to do is to paste the 2018 sales in the folder, that same folder, and go to my Power Query. And when I move to my Power Query, go to Pivot Analyze and Refresh All. If I click on Refresh All, this is what Excel does for me on Power Query. Let me come to that other date. It has added 2018 for me. You see, the time wasting has been cut short. So you are not supposed to do this analysis or this same performance across all the particular files that we have. So you, you can use the time now that you saved in doing 2018. You can use it to go and be chilly. And your manager is asking you, have you done the same thing for 2018? You say, yes, sir, I've done it. 2018 has now been added. And what we need to do is to refresh. And all the operations that we carried out on the previous three files has been done for 2018. And we have the 2018 file here. Isn't that wonderful, guys? Hello? It is, it is wonderful, sir. So that is why I told you that Excel Power Query is a tool for reducing time wasting. What will take you like one hour to do, Power Query will reduce it to like 10 minutes. All you need to do is to do for one and Power Query does for the remaining. Don't worry, tomorrow we are going to be going in depth. So we'll go to a site. There is another thing that Power Query can also help us do. There's something we call pivoting data, not uh, power pivot to pivoting data. We are going to go to this UN site. This is where you get all the data about the everybody in the world. We are going to be going to this UN site. It's not loading now. We are going to be getting data. And when you see the data, you will notice that you can't perform analysis on that data. But with the help of Power Query, we can be able to pivot this data. So we're learning something they call pivoting of data tomorrow or pivoting of columns. Please don't forget that because that is going to help you. Because most times when data comes, it doesn't come in a format that you want to use. It is your ability for you to transform that data. That is what separates you as a good data analyst. So I'm going to be teaching you guys on that pivoting of data. And trust me, what you will learn tomorrow is going to be something that you'll be proud of for the rest of your career that you know how to do. So that's exactly what I needed to touch, us, touch on. So having said that, do we have any questions before we go to the next topic of the day? I know we've done this. Do we have any questions before we go to the next topic of the day? Prof, are you still with us? Hello, Prof. Okay. Um, sir, so, I have a question. Okay, go ahead, sir. 
Um, sometimes I work with data that has uh, two rows as headers, right? Um, for instance, Correct. we have something like last time, but then the unit which is seconds will not be on the same header, but it will be a line below. And so if you want to combine those two as one header, could you also use the the power query to do that? I did not join the class That's very early right. enough, but I was just fidgeting around the data I have with what you've been doing. And then I realized that as soon as I tried bringing it in, I had that. So I wanted to know if that is something that could happen. Thank you very much for that question. So tomorrow, I'm going to be I'm going to be working with not just data but templates. You know, sometimes you will see data sets that is coming in form of templates. So template in the sense that you have the name of the organization, you have the name of the branch, you have the name of even the staff. You understand? In yeah. that kind of scenario, we can be. Don't worry. We'll work tomorrow. We'll work tomorrow. We'll work effectively. You get my point. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, guys, do we have any other questions? So tomorrow we're working with templates. We'll be working with data sets that at first you guys will be seeing that this data set, I can't use it to perform analysis. I'm going to be telling you some of the fundamentals of how machine appreciates data. So you notice that when you go online or go, um, I don't know, I'm thinking our custom project should be around cleaning up data from a survey form. You understand that when you get data from a survey, this is not how you can put it in Power BI, Tableau, or Excel to do form, form of analysis. You still need to transform that data. So I think I will get some kind of data and do our custom project should be around data transformation and data cleaning. I think that's exactly what we we'll do for our custom project because I noticed that a lot of times as a data analyst, you will notice that data sets that you get from the feed are always coming with issues. So we are going to be doing some kind of perform um, some kind of operations using Power Query. You understand? So that is that. We'll be doing some kind of, um, don't worry, let's just hold our OCC tomorrow. So do we have any questions before I move on to the next uh, topic of the day? Okay. Yeah, sorry, sir. We can get the data you use today um, to run this uh, analysis so that we can make a practice, a practice of what okay. you did after the Okay, fine. So I'm going to be sending you all this. I'm going to be sending you all this, yeah. So I'm going to be sending you all that. All right, thank you. So um, I told you guys that before we finish this course, we are going to be working on a um, certain thing. Uh, number one of them is, I think I should close all this. Don't save. Okay, so I told you guys something that um, print CSV open with yeah. So I told you guys that we are going to be doing a lot of. We are going to be doing a lot of um, a lot of shortcut keys. So I thought it wise that we need to understand shortcut keys. We need to understand shortcut keys. It's going to really help us as a as in our career as a data analyst. You understand? It's going to help us in our career as a data analyst. So let me just select some certain columns and paste here so we need to have a lot of data for us to carry out this operation is my table big enough can you see my sheet 
Hello. Yes, we can. can. It's fair. Okay. Or you can enlarge it a little more if possible. Okay. So let me do that. I think it's okay now, right? Yeah. Yes, it's much better. Okay, so we are going to be touching on Excel shortcut key, shortcut keys, shortcut keys. I told you your mastery of Excel, one of them happens to be shortcut. How effective you can use shortcuts in Excel. So the first one we are starting with is what? Control X. Snake as in Control X. I think I'll be typing them as we go ahead. So Control X. Or no need. Sure, I'll be giving you guys notes. So that will be no need for that. I'll be giving you guys notes at the end of the class. So control X, that is control save now, right? Yes. So you can see this quick access toolbar here. This quick access toolbar is maybe you are working, you just made some form of changes. You understand? You added new column and you want to quickly save what you've done so far. Just click on this icon here. It comes by default with Excel. Save. Just click on it and it saved the last item or the last step that you took. Again, if I press my Control X here, you are seeing that it brought a lot of. It gives me a lot of. Um, how will I call it now? It brings out a dialog box rather, and it's telling me to save it to a particular file. You understand? So I can go ahead and click save. So when I click save, it save it for me at the back end. So assuming I continue working and I want to save, you notice that sometimes, not every time we remember to press Control X for me to save the last step. You understand? Now, you will notice that in Excel, Excel has an option. I think it's good that I, I touch on this. Excel has an option in the settings that asks you so you go to these options, you go to the save tab. And when we go to the save tab or the save section, it's asking you, when should I auto save every information that you have? That is save auto recover information every. So for me, I tell Excel, please, every five minutes, whether I press Control X or not, save what I've done so far. Remember, for you to get this, you go here. When you click on your home, uh, you go. Oh, fire tab, go to option. Can no longer hear you, sir. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, hear you now. Apologies. Here now. A call your screen is not showing, sir. Yeah, a call came in and um, took me off. So sorry. So, are you guys seeing my? Okay. Okay. Okay, so like I said, if I want to do that saving, that I will tell Excel, please, every five minutes, whether I press Control X or not, you understand, save my work. Because most times by default, 
So many persons may not know how to save or may forget to save. I remember I was working one time where my system happens to be, we call it a lap, laptop desktop. So it so happened that one of my charging ships got bad. So if I'm working like this and say Nepal, or Nepal or where I wanted, my system will just go off. So I will need to now go back and manually put it on. You understand? So in that kind of scenario, in that kind of scenario, if you are working with something in that kind of scenario whereby your, or take for instance, your system is misbehaving, you want to quickly save it, but you forget to save it intermittently. So you come to your options here, and you go to this save section, and you are telling Excel save and auto recover information every five minutes. So whatever you do, every five minutes, you can change it to two minutes, but me, I like leaving it is five. I'll tell Excel, please, whatever you do, whether I click Control X or not, please save it for me every five minutes. So that's the first shortcut. So the second shortcut that we need to talk about here is what we refer to as the control T, the one that we all know. What does control T do if I would ask again? Hello? Yes, it's to create a table. Create a table, create a table right? Yeah. So control A, control T, it creates a table. Now it's not a table. What if you want to turn it back to a ship, not a table? What do you do? So for us to save time, all you need to do is to come to your table design. Still in that range. When you click on convert to range, it's telling you that, do you want to convert this table to a normal range? And when you click on yes, it is now in a default Excel sheet. Forget all this thing. I said did not take out the colors, but this is no longer a table. This is a sheet. You understand? It's only a table when you see that filter sign here. How do I know it's a sheet? How do I know that it's a sheet? If I should multiply these two things or add them, it only performs it for one. It doesn't perform it for all. Assuming it was a table, this is what will happen. Let me convert it back to a table. Assuming it was a table, if I perform any form of um, function or operation here, when I perform it, I say this times this. If merely I click on enter, it does for the rest of the rows. That's how you know the difference between table and sheet. So you now know how to go back and go forward. So this is the table. If I want to convert it to sheet, all I need to do is to select or go to table design and go to convert to range. And immediately I have my sheet. I think it's not bold enough again. Apologies. So moving on, moving on, moving on. The next uh, item that we have, the next shortcut, I'm going to send all these shortcuts. I'm going to send all this shortcut to us. So the next one is a um, filter. How do we add filter to our Excel sheets? On a normal day, you can go and add filter here. And you have filters appear. But the question is this. I told you guys I once did a course that speaks to Excel. And that course is in accounting. Nobody is. into our keys because i said every function here has a shortcut key how do i do that so if i want to add a filter on my table on my sheet rather not table all i need to do is to press ctrl shift l so i don't need to go here you understand i start clicking on filter no ctrl shift l so i can go and filter what i need to filter so if i should say okay i want to filter 2018 and 2015 is it 
So if I want to take out that filter now, I want I'm done with it. I want to take out that filter. Still press that Control Shift L, and it takes it off. So it's like a toggle, on and off. That same that same um, filter. So the next one is selecting. Hello guys. So assuming you want to perform, and you just see a data set, please guys. Whenever you are faced with a data or you are faced with data sets, try as much as possible to always scroll down. You understand? Especially when the data is very long, scroll down. Because you can be so shocked that when you come down, you are seeing a lot of gaps or spaces. So you need to fill out those blank or delete those blank. First of all, you need to visually inspect your data set before you start doing any form of um application because you can come here and when you scroll down you will notice that in this in this um, other id you are seeing somebody will come here and doing something like this and do something like this so it merges all the rows all the columns together merge and it's saying end so you first of all need to pick out all this. So whenever you come down, you must first of all scroll down. Whenever you see your data set, rather, you must first of all scroll down and look at the end of that particular data set to see whether they are still consistent with what you can see up. You can you always notice that there are some data sets you see when you come down, you are now seeing something like grand total. Grand total. And maybe you have the grand total here. Say the total is 1 million. You understand? You know, in this kind of setup like this, you can't perform any analysis. Before you perform any analysis, you first take out this summation. Let Excel do the summation for you. You get my point? So make sure you always scroll down. So in this kind of scenario now, if I want to scroll down, Without using this scroll bar, remember I said, don't use your cursor. If I want to scroll down, all I need to do is to press Control and Down key. And it takes me to the last row in that particular data set. I think it's that time I show my on-screen keyboard. On-screen keyboard, this is what I mean. You press your Control and you press your Down key. Are you guys seeing my screen? Control and down key. This down key is what brings it down. Again, if I'm down, I want to go up, the same thing. I press my control. So assuming I'm down here, I want to go up. I press my control and the up key, and it takes me up. You understand? Those are the shortcut keys. Again, you guys will understand something when I'm working. Assuming I want to, I want to highlight the just this column. I want to highlight this column. How do I go about it? From top to bottom. How do I do that? I press my control, hold my shift, and press my down. So you are telling Excel, as I'm going down, please select everything from top to bottom. You understand? That is how you need to select as you are going down. Again, if I was down here and I want to select everything from top to bottom, I just press Control Shift, the upper key or upper arrow keys, and it's less from that top to bottom. I know some of you know this, but please, I'm taking you guys somewhere. Another thing I want to do is that, assuming somebody says, I want to go left, I want to go right. I've selected my top to bottom. I want to go left now. Remember, you must still hold your control and shift. You press your right key and you go left. You understand? To select everything from left to right, rather. So you go right this time around. You understand, guys? You press and you go right. And that is it this time around. So that's how you can go up, down, left, right. So if I was here, 
I want to go right, hold my shift, my control, and I press that, and I go to my left arrow key, and it takes me left. So I've highlighted everything here. So assuming I want to highlight everything from here, I want to highlight everything downwards. I don't need to touch my cursor. I hold my control, my shift, go left, and go down. I press my control shift, or press my, my left key and my down key, and it selects everything. I cannot copy and go paste somewhere. So that's exactly how you need to. But another thing you need to understand is that, assuming there was space, assuming there was space, so assuming we were to insert a space here, how do we do it now with this thing work the up and the arrow key and whatever so when you press your control shift and down key now you notice that something happens it only selects it only stops where there is a space it doesn't go down more than that so you still need to press your down key more for you to be able to go down to the last figure or the last row so don't forget that Whenever you are using your control shift and down, it will always stop where you have space. The same thing with this part. If I was to come here, control shift, left key, you see it stop where there is space. You understand? I'll need to still press that left for you to go and take over everything I need to cover. So that is it. Always notice that whenever there is space, it will always stop where it encounters a space. You get my point? Do we have any questions so far? We are still going ahead, ahead. So the other one is looking at um, paste as values. Paste as values. So as you mean, we had, say, a formula here. You guys already know this one now. That add, the, that add these two together. So this is it. We're adding these two together. So I want to paste it as values. So remember, I can copy. I can copy. And I right-click here. And I paste as values. That is this one to three. But again, there is another way you can actually do this paste options and you have a broader um, of you have a broader set of options come out so the only way you can do that is press alt e s v alt e s v and you can actually paste as values you select this value here and you paste as values you understand now you will ask me uh this thing you are doing you have it here now why are you going that or tsv i will explain why that or tsv is important so let me explain that let me just quickly explain that so that we understand why that or tsv is correct so assuming we have something like this guys and you also have something like this Yeah. Hmm? And somebody is asking you, I want you to add these two values together and let them become one. So what you want to do now is to add both together. You understand? Add both together so that they can become one. So what you want to do is just basically adding these two together. That's exactly what you want to do. So this is what you want to do. You want to just add these two together. Do you know you can do this without doing formula? I told you guys to stick out, to stick around that you will to some new things here. So if I should copy this now and I want to add it to this, all I need to do, and without using formula, all I need to do is to copy this particular section. I copy these three numbers, copy, press my alternate. ESV. Apologies. 
didn't do well. Alternate ESV. I'm not getting it. So what I need to do is to come here, click on paste, go to paste special. So that's exactly what we call paste special. Alternate ESV or paste special. So you want to paste it. Where do you want to paste it? I want. Paste it here. I've already copied to superimpose it. At the same time as I'm superimposing it, I'm also doing the addition. So what I need to do is to come here, go to space special, or do my alternate ESV, and I click on my add. Once I select my add and click OK, it has that addition for me. This is how you can do addition in, in Excel without doing any form of formula. So what I had to do was to superimpose the two number. As I'm superimposing it, I'm adding them together. I can also do subtraction. I can do subtraction. That same thing will subtract. It has gone back to the former value because I took out what I added initially. We can even do multiply. We can do multiply. You understand? So that is some of the keys that you need to understand. You can copy and paste. As you are pasting, you are doing multiplication. You are carrying out mathematical functions. So that is it about that pasting. So we'll move on. Any questions so far? Do we have any questions? OK, we don't have any question. So perhaps. We want to sum all these numbers together. So I think I should give some space so that we can see what we're about to do. Insert. So assuming I want to sum everything here now, I don't need to come here and I'll do something like equal to sum, open bracket, sum everything. No, no, that's not the way to do that. If I want to sum everything here, there's a shortcut key for that, and that is alternate equal to. Let me do that again. All I need to do is to come here. I press the very last cell, just after the last item. Press alternate equal to, and it sums everything for you. That's how you can work with keys very fast. Assuming I want to sum everything across here too, what I need to do is to do alternate equal to, and it starts from the first number it encounters and sum it for us. So perhaps it's just the two I want to sum. I will need to put a space in between so that it doesn't start here because postal code, you don't want to start from postal code. If I want to sum these two items, I'll make sure I put a space before this, um, after this particular postal code. So if I want to sum just these two across, I just type equal to, alternate equal to, and it starts here. You get my point. But if you want to force a cell and say, okay, I want you to, I want a situation whereby you follow exactly what I intend to do. You can select everything here and just press alternate equal to, and it gives you the last sign here. So if I want to sum all these, I can select them and type alternate equal to. So assuming I want to start from here, I don't want to add this postal code. All I need to do is to select these two and type alternate equal to, and it adds it for me. So that's exactly how to be very fast with Excel. Now you see how fast it is. They say you, stay, you save two seconds per operation if you are not using mouse and you are using shortcut keys. So it's very fast. You are very, very fast whenever you are using shortcut keys. You understand? Um, so we move on to the next one. So assuming I want to insert shots, you guys already know shots now. So assuming I have something like this and I want to insert shots. I want to insert shots automatically. So this is it. So I want to copy this and copy this and paste them here. And I want to insert this chart now. 
I select the items I want to work with and just press alternate F1. Alternate F1. And it inserts a chart for me. So I don't need to go through all the route of coming here, going to insert, looking for the chart. So that's how to be very fast with inserting charts. Again, moving on, assuming somebody asks me, I want you to select, I want you to insert a space. You understand? I want you to select the whole row. You understand? So this is exactly what I want to do. I delete. This is what I want to do. So I'm in a particular cell here. I'm in a particular cell here. And it says select the whole column. I press control, control space. I select the whole row, the whole column rather. Remember, I did not move my cursor. You understand? I just press control space and I selected the whole column. As soon as I want to select just this row, so take for instance, I want to select just this row. I don't need to come here and now click on this, no. I can easily put my cursor on this seventh row and I just press control shift space. I'm coming, control, oh, sorry, shift space. And I select the whole row. So shift space to select the whole row. You get my point? Again, why did we do all this? Let me explain now why I did all this. So you may be faced with scenarios whereby you want to insert a colon you want to insert a space you understand now you are here and somebody is telling you insert a space you understand or insert a colon rather remember i press control space to select the colon now i want to insert a colon i've selected that colon i want to insert a colon I press Control Plus. Control Shift Plus to insert a colon. That's exactly what I did to insert a colon. You understand? Now, somebody is asking you, insert two columns. I want you to insert two columns. Hello? Are you no. guys hearing me? <laughs> I need to speak up. Are you guys hearing me? Somebody is sleeping. Say what? Somebody is sleeping in the class. Child is well. Child. Udom Abasi, I greet you. Are you enjoying yeah. the class? Oh, somebody raised his hand. Olushi Amai Fule. Sorry. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, Robinson, yes. Please, um, my question has to do with that um alt. Okay. Um, so uh, yes. you say, okay, you're saying who's on ground? Please mute your mic. Who is that person that is speaking? Udo Mabasi, please mute your mic. Mute your mic. See, uh, it means we, we have to possibly have to come to uh, come to the office on, on, on the main tomorrow. Let me just uh, wait in. He's out. deep into the conversation. So I, I have to call Udo and maybe we we'll have to because they have to draw a template. Okay, wow. I muted him. Okay, so Thank let's you. continue with the class. I was um, asking a question. Yeah, yeah, you said when you performed that finish. operation, it was it was quite fast for me. I, I, I didn't I couldn't uh, under, I didn't understand it. When you okay, were doing so, the control ESV. Okay, so the control ESV. Sorry, alt ESV, not control. Alt ESV. Okay, so this is exactly what I did. I said if I want to add these two numbers together, I want to superimpose and add them together. You understand? Mm -hmm. Remember. They are under, they are in a particular column, so I can't be doing plus and addition. I'll have to be doing, if I want to do a formula now, I have to do something like absolute referencing. So my boss is telling me I want to add these two together. All I need to do is to copy one, control C, copy. Make sure your cursor starts from the first one. Okay. You click on the first item where you want to paste. 
Yes. And when you click on the first one you want to paste, you press your alternate E X V. Okay, alternate so ESV. The X, e is it like xylophone or like school? The X. Okay, this is it. This is it. Alternate plus E plus X plus V. Okay, S. Sorry. Yeah. But if that doesn't work, all you need to do is to come here, copy, go to your home. You see this paste here, mm. this paste icon. Mm -hmm. click, click on the drop down. You are seeing paste special. Yes. So what it just gives you is the paste special. Yeah. You click on that paste special and it comes out. I think it's Control Alt V. Apologies, though. I think this thing is Control Alt V. It's not alternative. Oh, sorry, it's control alternate V. So it's mm. control plus alt plus V. They must have changed it here. So what I need to do, I copy this, make sure my cursor start from where I want to start pasting. Mm. And I press control alternate v, alternate V. And it comes out. This is my paste special. Okay. And I click on the add. I'm saying add as you are pasting. And when I click on OK, it has added. Right. Added the two items together. So mm -hmm. I can delete it. This is how to add without doing any form of uh, any form of um, formula or any form of operation. Yes. So that's that. Thank so you. let's move on to, yeah, no problem. So I think we can move on to, there was one I was trying to do. I said, if you are in a particular column, and you want to select that part, and they say insert two columns. All you need to do is to press your control space to select that column and press control shift plus to insert a column. But the question now is this what what did they say insert two columns? The same thing, control space. So this is my cursor, it was here. I want to insert two columns. So what I need to do, control space to select your column. I also do control shift right arrow to select two, two columns. So if you want to select two columns, if you want to insert two columns, you must select two columns. If you want to insert five columns, you must select five columns. So they are saying I should insert two columns. So this time around, I'll select two columns. You understand? So what I need to do now is press Control Shift Plus, and it has inserted two columns for me. Assuming they say insert three columns. And I do Control Space to select the columns. The same thing, Control Shift Plus to insert. You get my point, guys. So if I want to insert three columns, I will select three columns. And when I insert, it inserts three columns for me. If I want to insert four, I select four, and it inserts four for me. That's the trick. Again, that same thing applies to row. That same thing applies to row. So let's just insert a space here. So assuming I want to insert a column, a row rather, here. How do I insert a row? Maybe my cursor is here and they say insert a row. Control, Shift, Space. I think it's Shift, Space, yeah. She space and highlights the entire row for me. Now, I want to insert a particular row. I want to insert one row, control nine. Okay, control nine is to hide, control Z. So, inserting a column. I'm inserting a row rather. 
is he close? I think I've forgotten that. Yeah, control shift plus. Since the same control shift plus, since it's color, a row that is uh, highlighted now, Excel is smart enough to say, okay, this is a row that is highlighted. So I'm supposed to insert a row. So the same control shift plus you are using to insert both row and column. So if I want to insert a row again, let me do that again. I press my control shift space. Sorry, my shift space to highlight the row. I've highlighted the row. Once I press that control shift plus again, Excel is inserting a row for me, not a column, because it knows that ah, it was a row that was highlighted, not a column. So it inserts a row for me. Assuming I want to insert three rows, what do I need to do? I put my cursor in. I press my shift space to highlight the whole row. Also, press Control Shift Down key to highlight everything, three, three rows. Then I press Control Shift Plus to high, to insert three colon, then three rows. Do we have any questions? Don't worry, I'm going to send the notes. But for these ones I'm doing now, they will not be in the notes. You understand? This control, this inserting spaces and uh, three rows and three columns. You guys are in the class, so you can easily use your intuition to know how to do that. Um, so the next one is uh, speaking to hiding, hiding, hiding of shit. Hiding of shift. So if I want to hide the column, all I need to do is to make sure that that column is selected and I press control, zero. It has hide that column. You understand? It has hidden that column. I want to undo it, I press control Z. Now, assuming somebody is now saying, I want you to hide a rule. I want you to hide this particular rule. Maybe I selected all this. I want to hide it. How do I hide it? Press control it has hidden that particular row. Let's be highlighting it so that you guys will be seeing what is happening. So I want to hide all these yellow rows here. Control nine to hide rows. Y control zero to hide columns. Now the next thing is, assuming somebody sent you a sheet and is asking you, and you want to find out whether this person keeps some rows and some column there. All I need to do is to press alternate semicolon. Alternate semicolon. And when you press alternate semicolon, you are seeing some sharp lines here, some very sharp lines. That is how you know whether somebody hit a column or you hit a row. Did you guys get that? You are seeing some sharp lines here. That's how you know whether somebody hit a column or hit a row. So that's it for today. Um, so I'll be sharing the, this thing with you guys so that you guys can be able to see and work. So your assignment, apologies, tomorrow I'll be sending it. And you guys have a week to be able to do those assignments. They are going to be, these assignments are going to be, how will I put it? They are real world scenario. So we don't just give assignments and you are seeing a sheet. So we'll be seeing things like XYZ company, they are doing their check and balances, they are doing their routine data summation summation of accounts you'll be seeing the whole thing and questions will be asked so that's exactly how the assignment will come and please guys try as much as possible not to disappoint so you have a week and if possible we'll have a capstone project on sunday we'll have a data set coming something like a survey data and we'll be cleaning it up you understand 
So I think that's it for today. Do we have any questions before we call it today? Yes, I do. Go ahead, Soma. Sorry, please. I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't read read the uh, instructions very well. The, the first assignment that has been given, when is it due? Okay, you know what? I'll be sending you guys three assignments, and those three assignments they will be due in a week time. So I'm sending what I sent before. I'm sending it again for those of us that just joined, or those of us that. So you already have the video. Thankfully enough, Prof has recorded the video, so you have one week to be able to go ahead and make sure that um, uh, make sure you're able to assimilate everything that was taught. There's nothing that was taught in this class that nobody understands or the assignments that will be sent to you there's nothing there that will be foreign everything will be based on what you were taught you understand so this this class is going to be ending on sunday if i'm not mistaken um i believe that with what you've learned here guys i know that if you put it to practice the sky is going to be the limit you understand the sky is going to be the limit if you actually put what you've learned here so far. I want to only hear good things. You understand? So I want you all to always ensure you continue to practice. So you don't just attend the class for attending the class sake. You understand? Also try and practice. Especially those shots that we did initially. Those wonderful shots. <laughs> Marvin's. Uh, it will, it will still be acidic. <laughs> for As one, week, for one week, can you consider some of us that are working? It may be a bit tough since there are three assignments coming. No, the assignments I'm giving you is not programming. No. Mm -hmm. You understand? Excel, no, no. I'll, dis I'll discuss with Prof with regards to that. Let's see whether you guys can take it to one week is seven days. So if we we'll give you eight days. <laughs> We are working on uh, time. No problem. Well, whatever I'm going to give you guys is something that I know you can tackle okay. if you've been paying attention. For those that don't, they were not in the class, just watch the video. You can be able to answer the questions. You understand? Okay. So that's it from my end. Um, Prof, over to you, sir. Nothing from mine. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.